Hi, and welcome to lesson nine, our last lesson in our unit on the nucleus. And so we're going to stop here at the end and talk about some of the various technologies that nuclear chemistry has made available for humans to use. This is actually a picture of a radium dial glow in the dark watch. And that's pretty cool, right? I mean, it uses the radioisotope radium in order to glow in the dark. And these watches were typically painted with radium containing paints by women who worked in factories. There was one in New Jersey, for instance. Most of these women subsequently developed terrible, terrible diseases as a result of being exposed to so much radioactive material. They actually became known as the Radium Girls and were one of the first class action lawsuits that was actually successful in paying for the medical expenses that they incurred at the end of their lives due to their exposure in the workplace to these toxic radioactive radium salts. So it's important to understand that radiation does have negative effects on human health. The major way that radiation affects human health is by damaging DNA. DNA, of course, contains the instructions necessary to build all of the proteins in our cells, and our proteins carry out all cellular functions. When our DNA gets too damaged, the cellular functions that control cell reproduction can often be damaged as well. And as a result, cells will grow uncontrollably. This is called cancer. This leads to tumors, which can, of course, cause disruptions in the functioning of the body and lead to death. Enough radiation exposure in a short enough period of time will damage the DNA so badly that it leads to the instantaneous death of the cell. And so people who've been exposed to a tremendous amount of radiation in a short period of time will often die over the next couple of days due to the death of populations of cells in their body. Radiation also produces a tremendous amount of heat, and so that heat can produce physical burns. Nuclear radiation is what we'd consider to be ionizing radiation. And what we mean by that is that it has enough energy to actually knock electrons off of atoms and cause those atoms to form ions. This causes the ions that are produced to go and react with their surrounding environment. And so if you look at these two pictures, what you see here is a direct effect of nuclear radiation, where that nuclear radiation is interacting with the DNA directly, or you see an indirect direct effect where that nuclear radiation has reacted with a water molecule and caused what's called a free radical to be produced inside of the cell with that free radical then going and interacting with the DNA. In both of these cases, the DNA is being damaged as an effect of this ionizing radiation. Because we don't want to be exposed to additional radiation over our natural background level, we do have a series of technologies that have been developed to help us detect radiation because we can't feel it and we can't see it with our eyes. So Geiger counters, scintillators, and dosimeters, as you see here, each one shown from the left over, are examples of radiation detection technology. We're all familiar with Geiger counters from science fiction where people in yellow suits show up and they have their Geiger counters and they start clicking when they go near the radioactive source or the person in some cases. These work by detecting the products of radiation, generally ions. So usually there's some sort of sample of an inert gas in a Geiger counter or in a scintillator. And as that inert material interacts with the radiation, it produces ions, which are then detected and expressed electrically, usually through clicking or through a readout on a dosimeter. There are, of course, many medical uses of radiation, and one of the major ones is in imaging. So things like x-rays, CAT scans, and PET scans, these all use radiation in order to generate images of processes inside of the body. X-rays were discovered by Wilhelm Rankin at the end of the 1800s, and he immediately understood that they could be used for medical imaging. This is actually an image of his wife's hand that he took with his early X-ray generating technology. CAT scans also use X-rays, and X-rays are a little bit different from the kinds of nuclear radiation that we've been talking about up to this point. They're a lot more like gamma rays, so that high energy form of light. PET scans do use nuclear radiation. The PET stands for positron emission tomography. And so during a PET scan, you're injected with a radioactive positron emitter, and that positron emitter accumulates in the areas that doctors are interested in visualizing. The PET scanner uses the positrons that are produced from that source to generate an image of the area. In this particular case, we see two images of brains that were produced through PET scans. The brain in the middle is very healthy. The brain on the right is actually suffering from Alzheimer's. And you can see that there's a distinct distinct difference in the way that these results show up, which helps doctors understand what's going on inside of the body. 
This notion of using a radioactive substance to accumulate in an area of the body to get better kinds of images on x-rays is pretty common. These substances are what are called tracers. What you see in this picture is a series of images taken after this individual was injected with a tracer containing radioactive fluorine or fluorine 18. This is accumulating in the tumors that are present in this person's body. And so all of these black spots that you can see on these images are actually tumors, which were much easier to visualize due to the fact that the tracer accumulates inside of them. I'm sure that you're familiar with the use of x-rays to treat cancer. Uh, there are some forms of cancer that use nuclear radiation as well. This is one example where a person who has a tumor is put into a machine that exposes them to the gamma rays produced as radioactive cobalt-60 disintegrates. Those gamma rays are targeted at the tumor, with the idea being that since tumors are the most rapidly dividing cells in the body, by selectively damaging their DNA with nuclear radiation, you're going to lead to the death of the tumor. In terms of commercial uses of radiation, there's quite a few technologies that have been developed. You're all familiar with the x-ray scanners that we see whenever we go to the airport and have to put our bags in to be checked. This is a very easy way to visualize the contents of something without having to open it up and root through it. Another place where radiation is often used is in preserving of food. The idea here is to expose food to nuclear radiation to, to kill any of the microorganisms that are living on the food and thereby delay the food spoilage. In the United States, any food that's been treated with radiation has this symbol on it to let consumers know that it's been treated with nuclear radiation. But it's important to understand that treating food with nuclear radiation does not make that food radioactive. The radiation simply destroys the bacteria and fungi that are living on the food and and that food is then kept from going bad for a longer period of time. You may be surprised to learn that there probably is a radioactive substance in your house. It's actually in your smoke detectors. Smoke detectors use a small amount of the radioisotope americium. As that americium decays, it creates a flow of alpha particles which react with air molecules to produce a stream of ions. This stream of ions completes an electrical circuit. As long as that electrical circuit remains intact, the smoke detector will not go off. But when there's smoke in the environment, the smoke moves into that ionization chamber and prevents the alpha particles from continuing to produce ions, which breaks the circuit and signifies that there's smoke in the environment, which triggers the smoke alarm. The amount of radioactive material in your smoke detector is incredibly small and it's so well shielded that you cannot detect any additional radioactivity around the smoke detector if you use something like a Geiger counter. You have this chart on page 13 of your note packet. It goes through the uses of different types of radioisotopes. Some of the isotopes that we've already discussed for things like radiometric dating and nuclear power are on this chart, as well as some of the new ones that we've discussed here. It's a good idea to take a look at this chart and make sure that you understand the uses of each of the isotopes listed. As we wrap up, I just want to talk a little bit about radiation and you and why you shouldn't be freaked out about the fact that you live surrounded by sources of radiation. So what this graph is showing is the regulatory limits of radiation that different people can be exposed to and that different sources provide. You can see that something like flying across the Atlantic Ocean in a plane exposes you to a small amount of radiation. But you can also see that we are all exposed to a natural background dose of radiation over the course of our lives. The average natural background dose combined with the amounts of radiation that we're exposed to just as we live our normal American lives are shown here on this graph. But you can see that that annual amount is considerably lower than the amount that you would get from a whole body CAT scan, which is itself five times lower than the amount that a nuclear worker or somebody who works around nuclear technologies like at a nuclear power plant would be exposed to. In other words, this is not a problem. The issue comes when you're exposed to additional sources of radiation. And so the best visualization I've seen of this comes from XKCD. I'll provide a link down below this video so you can go and blow this up and look at it. But this shows all of the different sources of radiation, starting with very small amounts, like sleeping next to somebody, and moving up to the kinds of radiation where the exposure would be so massive that it would cause death instantaneously. And I hope that you can see from looking at this that you have nothing to worry about by living your life in terms of radiation exposure. The only situations where exposure to radiation may cause an adverse effect on your health is when you're exposed to considerably more than what you're exposed to just living your lives in this radioactive world as part of a radioactive universe. Thanks so much for watching this discussion of nuclear technology. Please make sure that you can do the following. Make sure that you can explain how radiation damages biological organisms. Make sure that you can describe the applications of nuclear technology in medicine and industry. Make sure that you understand the natural background sources of radiation, where they come from, and why it is not a big deal. 
If you can do all of those things, you're doing great. If not, that's okay too. Take a moment and write down any questions that you have. You can always leave them in the comments below the video, or you can always get in touch with me through the information in the info field. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.